Good day everyone. My name is Jana Noah and today we'll be looking at the seven of the OAP top ten which is cross-site scripting. Now no most of us have heard or we have learned about cross-site scripting and by national be a new topic to most of us. When we are in cross-site scripting for the first time, as always, we have a mat we have a material provided to us you can read through and understand the basic concepts of cross-site scripting. So cross-site scripting, also known as XSS, is a vulnerability typically found in web applications. It's a type of injection which can allow an attacker to execute material script and have it execute on a victim machine. So basically XSS is a client side attack. And we have various types, we have three types of XSS. We have the stored XSS, we have reflected and done based. All of these are explained on the material, you can look through them. Then we have XSS payloads, and that to be able to execute this attack, we will use payloads. So, how to construct this payload, how to craft them. We also have the example here, which can read through, and we have the challenge. So, to stop the challenge, we have to deploy the machine. But before we do that, as always, well, make sure we are connected to the VPN. So let's make sure we are connected to the VPN. Okay, once we are connected to the VPN, then we can head over and deploy the machine. Well, we'll give it some time to boot up. So while that is going on, we can look at the XSS payloads. So we can create pop-ups by doing scripts, alerts using script tags the one thing to notice is that xss instead is a client side attack it has everything to do with javascript so basically xss leverage javascript everything about xss uses javascript mostly so for us to understand xss we must understand javascript to some point now let's check the ip address to see if the web server is up not yet so we'll give it some time and we can also read to write in HTML. We have the document dot write, and we have the explanation, and we have the access key logger. We have we can use access for key logging. We can use it for port scanning. We can use access for a whole lot of things. And we are given an address access payloads dot com. The website that has access related payloads, tools, documentation, and more. So we can. Check this out. I'm going to go to this address and just see what's there. Okay, so on this address, we have different payloads, tools, documentation about XSS. We can take time to check them out. But for this tutorial, we'll just head over to the challenge and see if the machine is up. Okay, the machine is up. Then we can we have a login box a register box so we need to log in and we start to continue so let's just log in i'm going to be using the username woodfish the password of password which is very secure i'm trying to bring this up okay that's enough then the first one is to go to the ip address slash reflected so we go to the reflected and the first question says craft a payload that will cause a pop-up saying hello so you can go back to our payloads to check to understand how it works and also here we are giving some information about why this works disable your process protection you can read through them so to craft these payloads, we say we use JavaScript and to declare JavaScript in HTML, we use the script tags. So we are going to declare script tags and we want to create a pop up. Following our XSS payload, to create a pop up, you use the alerts, then you can head back to the page and we have scripts, then you can alert. And what we have to alert is hello so type that in 
then just search doing this we are able to alert hello then click ok and it shows us the first flag which is there is more to access than you think clicking ok we get back to the page that's we have been able to answer the first question then the second question says on the same page craft x reflected SSS payload i will cause a pop-up with your machine ip address now this part most people find it tricky or we just do the same thing we did before we have the script that now what i want to do is print out um the machine ip address now to do this we can head over to google our dear friend and search for how to show server ip address using javascript you can do this on there's a post on a question on stack overflow someone asked then looking through you can see we have this this one which is for php people are interested in javascript then you can go down and can use the location dot host to get the ip address that's one way to do it then we can also we can use our developer tools either in chrome or firefox so i'm using chrome i'll be heading over to the console and what we can do is everything javascript is in something called the window objects so we can query it using window then we can check into the location and there are a couple, there is a couple of things we can use you can check with this you can check the host name which basically shows you and check host name you can use windows.location host which is what we want and that will show us the machine ip address so we know windows location was supposed to give us the machine ip address we can then try to alert it here so we alert window.location dot host then we can search for that and we have the ip address alerted then we have the second flag that says reflective access for the win so we are done with that too then the third one says we should go to start make an account we have created an account already so when we do that again then it says add a comment and see if you can insert some of your own html now we have to insert html and we can search this and so we will try to insert an image and give it a source of x and since x is not a valid image it's going to result into an error so once we get an error we want to run to it so we use the image so it equals x then on error once we get an error we want to alert one and i don't want to do so we are using an image tag the source is equals to x which is not valid then once we get an error we alert one so we click on comments and we have successfully added the HTML comments answer for Q1 so we are able to get a flag for that then moving on the question says on the same page create an alert pop-up box appear on the page with the document cookie so this is JavaScript you can head over and use script tags then we have to create an alert to show our cookie then to show our cookie we use document.cookie as we have our cookie gives then we can paste the alert and we have the cookie and we have the flag which is well done level 2 so that is also done then the third one says change xss playground to ayami aka by adding a comment and using javascript so doing this we have to change this xss playground to this by adding a comment and using javascript now this part is if you don't understand it there is an int if you need int for the question you can click here and basically shows you the int 
like we did earlier we also use our script tags then this time instead of alerting we want to select an element on the page so we can use the documents like type dot query selector this is javascript so as i said earlier you have to understand some level of javascript to understand how fss works so what we want to change as seen in the hints as the id of thm title and we have to change that you can use the text content and we want to change it to to say i am a hacker so that's all we need to do then click on comments then click through all this and we should have the answer which is websites can easily this with the access so that's all so once again if some of this looks new to you try to read about basic javascript read about xss and how to craft xss payloads and it will become clearer once again thank you for listening that will be all for day 7 and we will see you in day 8